why we cry. Crying is, of course, one of the experiences almost all people have had at one time or another. On the one hand, the process has a physiological benefit, as it helps to wash away debris from the eyes. However, its linkage to emotion seems to be unique to humans, and there isn't yet a consensus on why humans have developed this particular behavior, as emotional crying has no specific linkage to a physical benefit. Though there seem to be some chemical differences in emotional tears, there isn't yet a consensus as to what physical good crying does. As with many other physical processes, however, it seems this one developed as a social mechanism. For example, it could have developed as a means of encouraging others to develop empathy or to demonstrate submissiveness. And, because tears are so evident on the face, they remain a key way for humans to communicate their feelings to others. Why we laugh While the reasons for laughter can vary widely from culture to culture, this does seem to be one of those things that binds humans together. Since it's so common, one might think science would have found some unifying theory to explain humor but, instead, the opposite is true. Even now scientists struggle to find a way of explaining in a systematic fashion just what humor is and how it works. New research has suggested humor stems from the violation of a social or physical norm, yet not to such an extent it would trigger a fear response. Some evolutionary biologists have also suggested laughter might have played a role in fostering social bonds and cohesion and, since this would increase the odds of group survival, it meant such a behavior would be reproduced in the next generation. Still others have proposed humor might stem from the juxtaposition of expectations and reality. Why your hair gets a static charge from rubbing it with a balloon. One of the most common science classroom experiments involves a balloon, and most people are familiar with the feeling of running it across one's hair and generating a static charge. It's such a common feature most people don't even think about what causes it. Scientists, however, have done so, but they remain unclear about the mechanisms involved or why it happens the way it does. At one point, it was believed the static charge occurred because of the interaction of the two different materials, each of which carried different numbers of electrons. However, recent experiments have shown this particular explanation doesn't hold water, as it doesn't explain why static charges can also build up between objects of the same material. Even the prevailing explanation for this, which states the difference in size accounts for the charge, also doesn't work. The prevailing theory among researchers suggests there may be other molecules that are being transferred in the contact. why we yawn, and why it's contagious. Yawning is one of those physical actions it seems impossible to escape. In addition, anyone who has been in the presence of someone else who is yawning can attest to a simple fact, it's contagious. Given how common yawning is and how quickly it seems to spread, it is all the more remarkable to discover how little science actually knows about it. Prevailing wisdom suggests the process is the body's way of getting more oxygen-rich blood to the brain, since it seems possible humans take fewer deep breaths when they are tired. However, the actual neurology behind the need for this particular process is still somewhat lacking. Many other animals yawn as well, however. The contagiousness of yawning may stem from social mirroring, which is the process by which animals mimic the behavior of others, particularly those actions that might seem to be beneficial. Why we sleep Sleeping is, of course, an act with which everyone is familiar, given its necessity to human functioning. However, despite being a universal experience, 
scientists have yet to fully figure out just why humans or other mammals need it. After all, sleep poses many evolutionary challenges, largely because it renders humans and other mammals susceptible to predation. Experiments that have attempted to genetically remove the need out of subjects have never succeeded. Scientists also remain unclear as to the mechanisms the body uses to put itself to sleep, as well as how each individual determines how much sleep the body requires. However, though certainty eludes them, scientists do have some working theories about why humans need to sleep every day. Research suggests the brain conducts important maintenance during sleep, including forging connections between different parts of this vital organ. What's more, the brain has also been shown to clean out waste chemicals during the time when people are sleeping. Why do humans have an appendix? We rarely think about the appendix, a small structure near the beginning of the large intestine, until it gets infected and requires emergency surgery. Since Charles Darwin's era, many have thought the appendix a vestigial digestive organ left over from some previous evolutionary phase of our development and no longer in use. But in recent years, scientists have realized that many other mammals, including koalas and beavers, have appendixes. The tiny organ might be part of the immune system, assisting the body's defenses by storing healthy gut bacteria. Why we get hiccups? Getting the hiccups can be a truly unpleasant experience, particularly if they do not go away quickly. Most people have experienced this unpleasant sensation at some point in their lives and, while they often go away on their own, they can last for a surprisingly long time. And, despite how common they are, scientists remain as in the dark about what causes them and what they do, as they have always been. Of course, science has come up with a number of theories as to why humans hiccup. Some suggest it's a holdover from an earlier stage of evolution, while others think it might have to do with the need for baby animals to get rid of excess gas. As of yet, there have been surprisingly few systematic studies on the mechanics and causes of hiccups, let alone how to get rid of them. How Anesthesia Works Anyone who has undergone any kind of surgery has had an encounter with anesthesia. It is, after all, the phenomenon that has allowed such invasions of the body to be far less painful than they were in the past. However, despite how common anesthesia is in medical practice used throughout the world many thousands of times each and every day there has yet to be a scientific consensus on why it works. For some time, it was believed the process affected the fatty parts of the brain, interrupting neural activity there. It's now believed certain receptors in the brain attach themselves to the anesthetic, which leads to a loss of sensation and consciousness. Moreover, scientists increasingly speculate there may be a variety of processes at work, rather than one simple idea that would explain all the others. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe.